What's up everyone? My name is Paul Mez. I'm a visionary artist from Chicago, Illinois. I was born and raised on the South Side. I come from a very creative family and that was a huge inspiration growing up. I always had this nurturing environment for my artwork and encouragement from those around me to continue pursuing my artwork. As a visionary artist and someone who was inspired by the psychedelic experience, when I was 16, I had my first mushroom experience and that opened up inside of me a world of creativity that I previously was, that was previously unknown to me. So after that initial experience, I became more and more involved and interested in psychedelic use and how to use those substances to better create new works of art. As I continued to develop as an artist, I began, I began to experiment more with my techniques and as well as psychedelics in conjunction to create a meditative state and meditative form of art, also referred to as psychedelic art or visionary art. So visionary art isn't about technique, experience, or how much education you've had, but the understanding that you're getting yourself into a spiritual or meditative practice when you sit down to create art. With this in mind, my, my artwork has continued to grow and manifest new ways of, of seeing and perceiving the world. Growing up in Chicago, my art was highly influenced by uh, the hip hop and graffiti community. So growing up on the south side of Chicago, I was always around going to house parties and seeing break dancing and freestyle rapping and rhyming. And that was a big inspiration earlier on in my career. As I got away from graffiti and more into the visual, visual art and visionary art community, I was able to kind of refocus what I wanted to do and say as an artist. So that was a huge impact and huge inspiration when it came to the psychedelic community, the visionary arts community, and other artists who I look up to. Leading, artist, leading artists in this genre are Alex Gray, Amanda Sage, Android Jones, Autumn Sky Morrison, just to name a few. And these are the, some of the leading artists in the spiritual art world. So my artwork is mainly formed from previous visions I've had under the psychedelic experience, during the psychedelic experience, and are often a translation of my imagination. Though they're not perfect, I believe they represent an internal world that we are all part of and connected to. Growing up and living in Chicago, I was a part of an art community that really nurtured and inspired um, new forms of artwork. Having friends in the art world and having friends as other artists really helped to contribute to my vision as an artist and what I wanted to say specifically as an artist. Chicago had so many resources, the schools, the museums, all the different styles of art that Chicago and Hold it, holds together really helped me form a more worldly type of artwork. So as an artist, I've explored all different sorts of materials uh, for creating, from printmaking to painting. And I found that color pencils offer the greatest amount of versatility and control. The technical abilities they allow me to express are similar and kind of follow in the footsteps of the artists I really looked up to that had a more refined style when it came to shading and blending. Growing up, I always felt creative and that I always had this sense of wonder about artwork and just, just creating generally. And it wasn't until I really started to experiment with psychedelics that I began to realize more that my pursuits weren't just hobbies, but there were not only careers, but also callings. So it was not only a, a calling in life, and so, but also like a spiritual path for me. So now my artwork is not only a meditative thing, but also a, a, a way to become financially stable and to put something positive into the world. So with my art, so many people perceive so many different things into my artwork. I hear stained glass to abstract geometry. And what I hope people get from my art is when they see it, 
is that they pause and reflect on something greater or more beautiful that can possibly take them outside of themselves and hopefully uplift them to be inspired and create something so much bigger than what I've done in my, in my past. Inspiring artists of the future and the next generation is a prime focus and learning to reach out and express these modalities with other artists and budding artists has been such an important aspect in my development and the development of those around me. The psychedelic experience has been such a important and formative aspect of my art creativity. Though considered drugs and we're moving into an age of the psychedelic renaissance, many of these substances are gaining new recognition as tools for, the, for addiction recovery, for therapeutic modalities, and overall creativity. So using psychedelics in a safe and responsible way has really helped nurture uh, a spirit of freedom and just open openness in my artwork that was never previously there. So it's not, not that the drugs are doing the work or that the psychedelics and these substances are doing the heavy lifting, but it's the fact that they opened up something inside of me that I wasn't able to reach before. So looking at these substances as sacred and even something that can be considered profound has been something to help in, uh, inspire and uplift a sense of mysticism in my artwork. With the dawn of the psychedelic renaissance and the science coming out behind cannabis and LSD and all these previous substances that were deemed illegal and dangerous in harmful society, I hope we can take away that these substances are in my eyes sacred and hold incredible keys to our self potential and our world potential, not only for healing, but for addiction recovery, PTSD, and just a suit. They are a supercharged creative fuel. And if we can tap into what these beautiful things offer us, I think we can be a better society, a more peaceful society and just a more beautiful world. Living here in Humble Park, it's been important for me to create a, a home studio, a place where I can be comfortable creating my, not only my art, but my music, to poetry, to even practicing um, just yoga or working out. It's just been so important to have a space to nurture these different aspects of art and creativity. So I encourage everyone, have a place where you can just bust out your paints and your pencils and just leave them out. So you can just burst into any type of, um, any tangent you may have. Just creating a space and having an area in your home where you can just openly be creative and just break into something spontaneous has been so important for me as an artist. With the dawn of COVID, the artist's role has dramatically changed, changed and shifted from going out to festivals meeting people and hosting galleries and drawing people in that way to being almost primarily a, a digital platform artist. Someone who the artist's role has just shifted so much where it's become almost predominantly and only a online platform. It's been such a mixed blessing for me personally as with a lot of people losing work and myself losing much of my much of my uh, livelihood as well due to COVID, it's been that, that much more important to, to refocus my energy on my artwork. And having a community to respond and actually support me has just been this incredible blessing that I'm just so grateful for and that otherwise may not have happened. So just the dawn of this new pandemic has really just been a moment to reflect upon what I want to do with my artwork, how I want to redirect and direct my energy, and how that's gonna impact my brothers and sisters out there that don't have this opportunity to possibly make a living off their art. So it's just been this massive stepping stone for me, meeting other artists online, collaborating in different and new and unusual ways to help get a message or even make a sale it's just been just a completely new time and just a, a pressure point 
instance where now the artist is forced to change their, their normal mode and just adapt to this new world we live in. So my process in which I create artwork has definitely developed over time, but what I've found is starting with the simplest, uh, most balanced shapes and forms at the beginning allows to build on the artwork almost like a construction, uh, a construction site. Being able to build upon these simple forms that already are balanced and perfect in themselves creates a, a space where I can continually add without feeling like I'm just wandering aimlessly. So with the geometry and the studying of geometry, I kind of unconscious, um, unconsciously imprint a lot of those designs onto my artwork. So a message I would like to just give to other artists and even more advanced artists is be kind to budding artists. You know, oftentimes when someone's just starting off, even the smallest comment, either on social media or in person, can have this huge wave title effect and just either negatively or positively impact an artist. So my message is, if you have an art, a budding artist in your family, if you have a friend that's a budding artist, encourage them and nurture that because it could be that small word or that small sentiment of, of uh, inspiration that could really make the difference in their development as a career and as an artist.